Hey everyone, welcome to this video which hopefully is going to be the first of many videos to come talking about concepts in literary theory. This particular one is going to explain how the concept of imitation changes uh, throughout the history of literary theory, starting from the days of Plato all the way to modernism through Aristotle, Sidney and realism. Now, uh, first of all, we have the first antagonist of literature, who is Plato. Now, Plato has his own theory of imitation and his divisions of the world. Now, for Plato, on top, there was the world of ideals, the world of uh, philosophy, the perfect world that is full of perfect example. And there we find the truth and only the truth. Now, right beneath that, we find the world that we live in, the world of sense, which is the real world. And it is an imitation of the perfect world. We are imitating uh, the perfect examples in the perfect world. That's why we are not perfect, because we are still imitating. And right beneath that, we have the world of shadows. It is the world of poetry. Now, this world imitates the world of sense. It imitates the real world. And the real world is already an imitation, so this makes poetry an imitation of an imitation of the truth which means that the poet has no access to the truth or the world of the truth. Now, this is why Plato is objecting against poetry, and this is what makes him the first enemy to poetry. Now, his student Aristotle has a different say in that. According to Aristotle, there was what he called dramatic imitation. Now, dramatic imitation is different because Aristotle says that poetry is not an imitation of objects, but the imitation of men in action. And... Imitation is not just mirroring because it is not about what happened, but about what may happen. And this may is very important here because this means that poetry is written according to the laws of probability. This makes it moral and makes the poet talented and makes him able to write the plot. And this gives priority to poetry over everything else. Now, this makes poetry special. This makes it something unique, not just an imitation. And by just saying that it imitates action, and by just saying that there is a plot, it means that there is something special in poetry. Now, way beyond Aristotle's ideas, there was the ideas of Sir Philip Sidney. And Sir Philip Sidney completely reversed the concept of imitation. He uh, said there is a golden world. Uh, the poet does not imitate this brazen, ugly, real world, but he creates an alternative golden world. And in this golden world, the poet is a moral teacher because he shows moral through the poetic justice that is in the golden world, where the good are rewarded and the bad are punished. And when the audience, we, the readers, see this perfection in the golden world, we try to imitate it. We try to imitate the characters made in this perfect world. And it is no longer the poetry that imitates, but we are imitating. It is completely the reverse. It is completely the other way around. Now, uh, reaching realism and uh, what uh, is called uh, the 18th century novel, it is the, the age of realism and uh, it is the best age where we can say there is an imitation of realistic writing depend on having a setting that is either from reality or something that imitates it. Now, the characters are very ordinary. Uh, they are an imitation of ordinary people with ordinary anticipated actions. Uh, the language is also just like everyday language. It is used by ordinary people. And uh, the reality of realism is not the same as the real world, but an imitation that deliberately looks as real as possible. You see, even trying to make something real is not just imitation. It is something artistic. You see, the use of this ordinary language, the use of this real setting, the use of ordinary characters is an art of itself. It is what got the novel to spread in the first place. But way beyond that, we reach modernism, and modernism has a very unique thing to it, and a very unique something about literature. Uh, modernism ended imitation. Modernism and the end of imitation. Modern literature is not concerned with imitation or presenting something real. Modern writers don't really care about creating something realistic. Uh, the reality of modernism is vague, and full of symbols. Even if the setting or the characters or the language are realistic, reality is not the aim of modern literature. Even if by accident a modern novel is realistic, it is not the aim to make it realistic. The aim is to make something literary. It is what they called 
avant-garde literature, putting literature in front. And unless literature is documenting something of a historical value like war, then reality does not have anything to do with modern literature. But if they are documenting something important, then yes, it is meant to be realistic, but it is also meant, it is deliberately realistic. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more.